All right, so I installed um, the Mastercam 2017 HLD without spending a lot of time looking through the parameters, basically so I could look at this with, with fresh eyes and what I do going into uh, a new software release um, uh, version. So um, main thing is the operations, so toolpaths and the solids list, setting up different planes. These used to be separate menus inside of, uh, inside of SOLIDWORKS. Levels was an item across the bottom. So, so far I'm, uh, I'm finding that okay. Um, recent uh, functions would be the list of items that you've, uh, you've just gone through. Uh, let's see, so for our tools, copy and paste, and then uh, various parameters for line weights and uh, wireframe colors, picking uh, picking different colors, but let's see if we go back to the levels. Uh, one thing to notice is that unlike layers in AutoCAD, the levels are not tied to a color, and the color is not tied tied to a level. So you can kind of mix and match and pick depending on on your geometry. So I'm going to stay in tool paths. Um, deleting entities, duplicates, uh, hiding and unhiding geometry. That one seems a little bit new. I'll probably have to look into that. Analyze, uh, distance, toolpath, getting some information back. Um, that's what they've chosen to put on the home. And then they've added this heads up display. So a standard selection, uh, selecting for solids, edging, um, face selection, and bodies. Pretty much this whole group is going to be for solid geometry. We're starting off with the wireframe, so we're pretty much going to stay inside of the standard selection. Mm, let's see, we've got a pull down, so automatic or chains. Um, inside, outside crossing, so filters. Let's see, verifying selection, inverting selections, and the cursor. Well, nothing there to select. Let's see, auto cursor configuration, what is it looking for? Um, so pretty much everything's turned on. Well, nearest perpendicular tangent angular. So we'll see if we need those and be able to get back to them. All right, so um, selection point entities all line. So on a, uh, a screen that is a little bit larger resolution, so I'm scrunched down for the uh, for the video. This would all be um, stretched out along one the one side. All kinds of uh, all kinds of quick selection filters looks like. Going over to the wireframe, we're into the drawing tools. So points, no, we don't draw too many points, but we could use points as um, drill locations, uh, bolt circle calculations. The one that we'll use probably the most is the line in line and in points. So point to point, and the circle. Uh, we'll jump into the rectangle a little bit. Letters, bounding boxes, silhouette boundaries, those are going to be more for three-axis, multi-axis operations. Curves and edges, getting into surfaces, and again, multi-axis. Um, anywhere we see the arrow, trim, break, and extend. Break into two pieces, join entities. Um, and the other breaks, those are all going to be pretty handy. And then the fillet entities, fillet um, uh, fill it for the chains. Oh, there it is, chamfer. And then chamfer entities um, and chamfer the chains. So basically, a chain will go all the way around the, uh, the part as opposed to selecting each corner, each uh, element uh, object individually. Offsetting geometry, entities and chains. And projection is usually a 2D sketch onto a surface or some type of, uh, type of geometry. Um, let's see, closed arc, breaking circles, Not, don't recognize that one, splines, and combined views. Well, we don't have any views to go through. I'm going to jump over the surfaces. So if we did a wireframe, we could put surface geometry and treat it just strictly to that zero thickness um, paper, um, paper geometry. Solids, on the other hand, are going to be able to actually generate or work from an imported a SolidWorks um, uh, an inventor uh, inventor file. So basically, all of these are specific to those um, um, to either creating solids inside of MasterCam 
or bringing, uh, bringing solid geometry in from a translated file. Uh, model prep, going a little bit uh, further, don't see anything in there that we really need right off the hand. Uh, drafting, so my, my general feeling is that if you need to do drafting and MasterCam is your program, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. Um, if you need, need to do uh, really intense detailed drawings, this is not going to be my first choice. We're going to go to a SolidWorks. We're going to go to an Inventor or an AutoCAD and use drafting, drafting tools that are specific for drafting, not a tool that is geared more towards CAM. This will put basic dimensions on and you can get some information out of it, but again, it's not my first choice. So pretty much all of these are um, dimensions, extension lines, um, setting for notes, going through, um, go through that basic process. And uh, anything that I put in as far as drafting, I would put on a DIMS level or a drafting level so that I could turn it on and off easily, get it out of my way. Uh, the transforms. Um, so the transform has been around for quite a while. Uh, dynamic, translate, I use probably more than anything. Translate is going to be a, um, a move, copy, join. So they all kind of get um, uh, lumped into uh, translate. The, um, these, these were all formally called the, uh, the X forms. So um, rotation, oh, didn't need to pick on that. So let's go ahead and escape. Yep, didn't need to go through that. So still have some pop-ups going on. Uh, move to origin. So after we've drawn where it's convenient, maybe in quadrant one, we would want to do that rotate and then move to origin, pick a new point to, to have, um, have jump to, um, to our origin. Uh, mirroring. Roll, wrap chain curves, all right, so that's still kind of a three axis or geometry that we would put on a cylinder for a, a live C turning or something like that. Uh, offsetting entities and offsetting chains. And then uh, geometry nesting. So in the case of uh, the router, in the case of um, not, probably not so much EDM, but plasma and water jet. They would fall into nesting where we put a four by eight sheet, a um, uh, sixty by one one twenty sheet um, or bigger, onto a to a table, and we get as many parts out of it as we can. And then uh, arrays. Um, let's see what is the distribute. I don't recognize that one. Multiple copies of geometry between points, kind of fit in as many as it uh, can. Sizing, stretching, and scaling. If it comes in correctly or we've drawn it correctly, we shouldn't have to do too much of that. But in the uh, the case of uh, maybe a mold, we would want to um, make the uh, the mold geometry just a little bit bigger for shrinkage. And if it didn't come in um, uh, properly from the uh, the 3D modeler. Setting up for the machine. These are going to be our basic operations. Going into mill, uh, picking a mill tool, and then Having, um, uh, let's see where the toolpaths going to show up. Well, toolpaths are going to be underneath the group, and we'll try the uh, the right mouse button, which is my first um, best choice. Uh, lathe, lathe tool selection, wire EDM, router, um, basic design tools, uh, design mode. Oh, um, so it can transfer the license from cam to just uh, drawing, sketching. Control definition, machine definitions are things that are going on in the background. Uh, material library uh, for selection. But backplot and verify. Backplot will run inside of this window. Verify will launch a new window and show you the simulation of the toolpath on your, on your geometry. Generate, we're going to postcode. Now the demo version, HLE version, is not going to postcode. When we um, get the... Um, the full license resolved, then we'll be able to uh, output the GNM code. So creating a setup sheet. So the operator, the setup person, would be most interested in this setup sheet, going through and having pictures or uh, descriptions of the tools, the depth that it's going to run, the speeds and feeds that those, those are going to be run at, and all of the other uh, programs are going to have some method to create that, uh, that setup sheet. 
image capture, so a certain orientation of the part can be put into the setup sheet, and then clearing the Im image list of pulling them out of memory. Uh, machine simulation is a little bit more intense than just the simulator basic information. Um, so I haven't run full machine simulation, but we load a uh, vertical machining center. It should show us the table, pretty much all of our, uh, you know, a good amount of information. And then automatic tool pathing, I'm going to have to look that one up because um, that's, that's pretty new. Going into the view. And... Fully master cam, the machine simulation will check for crashes or interference and that kind of thing. Yeah, mainly the multi-axis, you're looking for um, interferences where the tool holder, the spindle is coming down and into the part or, um, you know, the, the really wild, uh, oh, that's going to make a grindy, crunchy, sparky noise that, you know, probably will cost us $15,000 for a new spindle. Um, those are those are the types of things that we're looking at is, um, are the retract planes, are the, the things going going through like they're like they're supposed to. Um, Is it advisable to know the parameters of your machine tool before you uh, consider making a part program? Well, you'd not like to know the um, the max RPM in the envelope, but all of the yeah, because you don't want to crash it. Yeah, so um, you know those are probably the the three that are most important to me: X, Y, Z, and what's the max RPM. So we go as, as those. The rest of the parameters. Um, I won't say they're arbitrary, but they're less important. We can go quite a long ways in the operations, knowing that we can fit into that work area and um, and we're not programming beyond the capabilities of the spindle. Um, so we're not doing uh, the solids, so oh, I jumped over. So zoom, uh, zoom to window. We're going to go through the mouse operations. Um, so the scroll wheel, the right mouse button, those types of things. Um, quick on the, uh, the graphics view, being able to jump through the view that you're looking at, not necessarily the tool plane or the construction plane that you're drawing at, but just your, your view orientation. Um, in the case of the solids, we would be able to switch from wireframe to, okay, so they're doing dimmed, no hidden, and then going back to the outline. Uh, full shaded or outline shaded, and then they've added appearances. I don't remember those. Stock shading, stock display, toolpaths, and managers. Yep, don't recognize all those. Show axis. Um, so there are. Oh, that was interesting. There are the, the views, picking uh, picking through the views, but we can have additional reference triads or. Um, they're calling them um, the uh, the axes or the the gnomes. We can put one in each corner to uh, to have the uh, the reference. So the one that I jumped over that I was looking for was actually the settings. So somebody said they found the settings. Can yeah, you point me? File. Well, that's a that's a good place for it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, should be yeah, should be configuration. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Um, so I would have. I know about this program. <laughs> okay, perfect. Good timing because I would have looked looked for that one for a little while. Um, it used to be over here, so it makes perfect sense that it got moved over here. <laughs> All right. So system configuration. The we're going to cover the high points. We'll kind of go through these, um, but really the the main one is that you have an English and a, met, and a metric at the uh, the bottom where it says current. That is where you're switching from English to metric. That is the only place that I know of that you are switching from English to metric. So if you bring in a metric part and master cam warns you and says, hey, these are metric dimensions. Um, you're set for inch. Do you want to translate? No, I want it to be metric. And then I will go tell it to switch from metric after I've verified dimensions, verified scaling. Um, so most of the time, and we'll, we'll, we'll run a check part, um, but most of the time I'll bring it in, verify that it is correct in metric, and then I will let it scale after I've, I've verified a few numbers. All right, so basically this is, this is your, your units. This is where you're changing, changing the units. Yes? Uh, 
Okay, so under File, yeah, let's jump back over File, and at the very bottom is Configuration. So this is more in line with 2017 Windows, so um, you know, not not entirely unexpected that that's where they would hide it on me. <laughs> all right, so number of places after the decimal to analyze, so four decimal places all the way up to from none to a bunch. Four is pretty pretty much standard. Uh, we're gonna stay in uh, stay in inches and analyze measurements. Uh, but, so we're really not changing anything in in that group. What did you click on on the left to get that particular screen where your cursor is at? Okay, so under analyze, this should be showing up as we go through the list. Got it. Then you're going to see these on the right. Back plot is going to be specific to well, we saw it back here in one of them <laughs> uh, that uh, when we do the the simulation inside of this graphics window. This will be for for that back plot, so not not really interested. Uh, cat settings, uh, line styles, um, basic information. So really, there's a lot of information in here that if we're having a problem, we can adjust and we can make those little little tweaks. But it's not uh, not necessary to go in and unless you're having uh, having those issues. Um, bounding box. We're going to preview um, chaining. Chain directions. Um, default chaining mode is in the 3D. Because we'll be doing mostly 2D work, that shouldn't be a big uh, a big jump or a problem. Um, but we can always change it back manually to the construction plane as opposed to the 3D environment. Let's see. You don't see anything else in here that is really uh, really interesting. Precision. The all important colors. So if you like the gradient, you can stay with the gradient. I'm not a big gradient. So when I take, go to none and use the graphics background color, then I am looking for something that says graphics back, background color. Background color gradient start, background in color. So let's go to basic black. And anytime, so this is kind of the start of working in the interface. I want to continue in this window. I don't want to jump to jump out of it. So I'm going to hit the apply. And it's going to tell me I'm over to, overwriting the configuration file. I'm kicking that, uh, that back. My screen background goes to black. Uh, let's see what else would be in here. Uh, auto highlight color, white or yellow is fine. Uh, probably will go to uh, what else? Um, chain defaults, groups, edge. May have to play with that one a little bit. Um, lathe items, mill items. Not seeing it, so I'll have to come back to it. Basically, there's a selection color that doesn't doesn't quite work with the um, with the black. So so a lot of choices, and I'm not seeing it. So we'll see what the results are, and then we'll come back to it. Communications are through um, through DNC. So if you have an Ethernet, if you have the old um, older 25 pin communication uh, serial connection, um, this will set up basic communication from NC or the uh, the master cam editor out to the machine. Um, so we don't have that. We're going to put this on a flash drive at best. Walk out, put it into the control, and transfer it off of the uh, the flash drives. Uh, let's see, converters, solids, um, bringing in auto, uh, AutoCAD, DWG, DXF files, um, stereo lith, uh, being able to export. So basically translating in and out the default machines. So mill default, we get a little further in. Maybe I would make um, uh, the vertical machining center um, and the settings that I put in make it the default mill can pick a default lathe, router, or wire. Specifics for dimensions and notes if you're doing drafting and you want to make the little changes and tweaks, 
they're all in there. Have fun with that. Um, you know, pretty much um, everything that you would want to adjust is uh, is available. File locations uh, really don't have to do much in here. Um, just kind of knowing where things are stashed. Auto save is kind of an important one. Do you want to have the system automatically save or hit the Control S on a regular basis? Um, in previous versions, Control S was not a programmed hotkey. I don't know how, how long I hit Control S before I realized that there was no hotkey associated to it. And then I felt like especially stupid about it. So we can do the autosave, the master cam backup files. Most of the time I'm going to run without a net. All right, if I trust the system and I'm not having a lot of crashes, I'm not going to worry about autosaves and backups. Um, posting and dialogues, default extension, .nc. This will kind of come up whenever we do get to post and will ask us again. Uh, printing for the, um, uh, for the drafting or the, uh, the output. Um, the setup sheet reports, being able to go through and um, uh, find those locations. If you're running on your personal computer with, um, uh, let's see, what, what was disappearing? Certain items would um, would go away, and it was usually because of now. This changed a little bit the um, the graphics settings, and I don't see the uh, the OpenGL, so maybe um, maybe that's been corrected. All right, so if we run across um, or I haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to go over to the uh, to the grid settings. The grid settings is actually the one that um, that I want. And where are my checkboxes to turn it on? Origin is at zero zero. It will stay at zero zero. I'm going to do a spacing of one inch and uh, a Y spacing of one inch. And then the uh, the size at 25 is 25 total. So if I wanted my complete table. Um, 12 or 16 by 40 or uh, 20 by 30, 16 by 30, 20 by, what are the other ones, uh, 20 by 40, 20 by 50 for different, uh, different machines, then I could put that in, but um, 25 is a good place to start. Most of our parts are going to be fairly small, and, um, and we, can, um, we can always come back to this for this um, uh, for this file and, uh, and ups, um, update it. Let's see, view sheets. You have to snap on though. Are you going to only allow snapping? Snap to near, always. snap always. Well, back up here we saw the uh, the items that were, I think we saw the items that were selected under snap. Um, that would be, no, that is the, uh, the grid point. So let's go um, Actually, that should be off. Well, it depends. We'll, we'll see how it's reacting and come back to it. Okay, view sheets, view settings, uh, free mode and dynamic. Um, I said some of these are a little bit in, uh, a little bit new. What's the green check mark to the left of grid settings? And so that's so the green check marks are telling me that I have made a change, but it has not been applied or saved. Okay. So if I apply it, it's going to tell me I'm updating the config file. Yes, I want to update. Green check marks go away and lock those changes in. Um, shading for the solids, solids for the solids, uh, spin controls, how much they will rotate. Let's see, startup and exit configuration, uh, default construction plane. Um, basic tolerances for mostly for um, for the curve geometry toolpath uh, defaults and toolpaths themselves. All right, so this is this has changed a little bit, and then the wire back plot. Okay, so we set the grid. Now I need to find out where to turn the grid on. 
because it used to be uh, a checkbox in that um, in that view. So let's see how good the help is. That's always a, a good time. I had to bring that up. Okay, so help is in the uh, the question mark in the upper right. See, we have a little. Oh, okay. Well, there went the uh, the toolbars. So a little carrot at the end. That's uh, that's new, but that's kind of nice, giving you more uh, uh, more work area. So we'll go to the search. Um, still kind of strikes me as the Windows 95 98 help interface, but um, just saying. All right, so um, let's see grid. How about grid display? All right, so setting default managing configuration files. No. So what I'm looking for is um, the big crosshairs and all the little dots. Oh, how about the uh, going up to the to the tab and going right there and saying show grid, <laughs> and then there's the snap to grid and up. So when in when in doubt, look right in front of you. <laughs> now what I'm not seeing is all those little one inch points. So it's going to be. Let's see if I can. No, they are there. They're kind of hard to see on the screen. They might show up a little bit better in the video, but each of these one inch lo locations, one inch snaps, there is a point there. Doesn't that? Uh down in the lower right of a screen tell you only look at six inches of pretty much so at um, uh, at uh, 25 there are 12 basically 12 inches 12 inches 12 inches and 12 inches mm -hmm. so as we're seeing that uh, that come up um, I can't say that I pay attention I don't know if that screen scale or um, grid scale, but uh, you know, with that being uh, 12 points, I would not think that uh, we're at 12 inches. So I have to look that one up too because I don't ever pay. It's one of those just never paid attention to. How did you zoom in and zoom out? Okay, so we're into the mouse buttons. Um, so middle middle mouse button, and that may be the the one that we need to look at your graphics settings back in the the configurations because on the laptops. There was an issue where we needed to tell it. All right, so let's jump back in there before we get to. Uh, how do we get rid of the little plus sign? It's cursor now. Hmm. Okay, we may have to look at that after because <laughs> I'm not familiar. Because I can't open anything. Okay. So we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to look at that one. Um, so the, the one, the middle button wheel, pan or rotate, um, if you hold it down, Looks screen again. I went back to the system configuration and jumped down to the view settings. So under screen and then to view settings. Um, so I guess that was the one I jumped over. I don't think about reversing the, uh, the mouse wheel, but if you're used to more of a, um, I want to say this is closer to AutoCAD than it is to SolidWorks. If you reverse, then it'll be like a SolidWorks. So snap, free moon. Yeah, the the 3D mouse. Yeah, the yeah. Thing. Yeah, we'll um, we'll demo it if you wanna wanna see it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll plug it in one of these times. It works. They have it set up for well, the rotation position controller. Mm -hmm. um, it works in SolidWorks. Kind of my. Um, when you're doing uh, a lot of assembly, you, you find yourself reaching over. When it's not there, you're still reaching over for something that's not there. Um, yeah, let me uh, let me think about why the uh, the mouse is um, function. I want to say that that was one of the uh, the graphics issues that we had to change a setting on. So the zoom in, zoom out. I'm just rolling the mouse uh, middle mouse wheel up and down to zoom. And then if you want to rotate, you hold the middle mouse wheel down. And that will send you over uh, to uh, an alternate position. The hotkeys are Alt-1 for the top. And then these are going to change in the bottom left as we go through. Alt-2 for front. 
Alt 3 for back, bottom, right, left, isometric, whoa, whoa, whoa. and nothing what under 8. Oh, cool. Look at all those. <laughs> what keys are you pressing? Okay, Alt in combination with number 1 okay. takes you to the top view. So if you hold down the middle mouse button and you rotate over, oh, I'm out of position. I'm lost. No, you just go press down the Alt key and the one key at the same time, and it's going to put you back into the top plane. Okay. And then as you go through the rest of the keys, it's just if we're out of position. So there's times where I may want to, I've applied a toolpath, I want to make sure the toolpath is going lower than the Z plane and you know not higher or whatever, or I want to make sure that it's going higher and not lower. Then I can rotate over, look at my view, get kind of that isometric view, uh, control seven, or I'm sorry, I'm in, I slipped alt, alt seven to get to the ISO view, and then I can jump back by going to alt one. So basically, alt one through seven on the uh, the numbers on the keypad will take you through those uh, those positions. All right, so I think I've found pretty much everything that I'm I'm interested or in that we need at least for our settings. Um, again, there may be a few things that specific to the mouse, specific to your uh, your video. And so we'll go ahead and stop the uh, the video here.